For this tutorial, you will need your selected yarn. I'm using this Bella Coco Crochet Irresistible Aran, which was an exclusive yarn found in my Crochet Society subscription box. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanted to find out more about those. You will need a crochet hook which suits your yarn. I'm using a four and a half millimeter today. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle for sewing in your ends. Before we get started though, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button if you like my tutorials and click the bell button to get notifications of my new videos. If you find this video helpful then don't forget to click the thumbs up button and then also leave me a comment. Finally you will find all of the written instructions to this pattern in the description box below or head to www.bellacococrochet.com. You'll also find a lot more stitch tutorials as well. Okay let's get started. So we're going to begin by creating our slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook and what we're going to do is do a, a foundation chain of however many stitches you want. It doesn't need to be in a certain multiple. So that's yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through and yarn over pull through. You can keep going until you get to your desired width of project that you would like and then what you want to do is add two more just for turning. So go ahead and pause the video, work that chain and meet me back in just a moment. So I have just done my foundation chain. I did a an amount of 18 plus 2 so I have 20 in total. We're going to go ahead and work our way back across this foundation chain for row one and we're going to be doing half treble crochets. Remember that's a UK term, in the US this is known as a half double crochet. So we're going to work in the third chain from the hook, so not the one on the hook, this is the first one and the second, so we're going to work into that third chain with a half treble crochet. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that chain yarn over and pull through, you'll have three loops on the hook and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on that hook. And you're simply going to do this into every chain all the way along your foundation chain. So go ahead, pause the video, work those half treble crochets all the way across or half double crochet if you're in the US and meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so I have just worked that row one with my half treble crochets. We're going to go ahead and chain two, one and two. This does not class as a stitch and we're going to turn our work. So the way that the camel stitch is going to work is we currently have the wrong side facing us. So all of the, uh, the work is going to be on the opposite side of what is facing us now. We're going to be working into the stitches slightly differently here. We're still going to do a half treble crochet. Uh, normally we would do the half treble crochet in the stitches like this, the two top loops where you will see the front and the back loop. So that is the, um, the V if you turn it onto its side here. We're going to work into what's known as the back bar. So remember we have the wrong side facing us now. So this is the back bar. We have the top two stitches here and then we have this other diagonal stitch which you can just see coming down here. This also might be known as the third loop. So we have the front, the back and then the third loop. So one, two, three. You might hear it re being referred to in different ways. But that is the stitch that we're going to work in and we're always going to work into the back bar. So just remember when we have the front side facing us, we're still going to be working into that back bar. If you want to, you can mark your uh, the front side of your work with a stitch marker if you find that easier. But I think you'll pretty much get to grips with it as we start to build. So what we're going to do here is yarn over as if we're doing our half treble. But instead of going into the top two loops here, we're going to go into this diagonal back bar. So underneath that stitch, yarn over and pull through. 
and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. Now that tends to be the most difficult one to do because you have to find where you're working into. But what you'll find is as you do this, it automatically pushes that back bar up. So you can just see it's starting to poke out there. So we're going to yarn over underneath that back bar, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And you're going to do this all the way along. So one half treble crochet into each of the back bars along this row. So go ahead, pause the video, and meet you back once you get to the end of this row, and I'll show you how to move on to row three. So I'm just now at the end of this row, and I just wanted to point out, make sure that you're counting your stitches so that you don't miss this very last stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and do my last stitch in there. If you remember, I did a um, foundation chain of 18 plus two, so I will have 18 stitches in my work. So this is what the uh, wrong side of the work looks like. It's very flat. And then I'm just going to chain two for my next row. And then this is the right side of the work. So you see this braided ridge at the front, that's exactly what we're looking for. So on the right side of the work, this is where we're going to get the pattern. Now that's really important to remember because we want to make sure that we're pushing these stitches always to the right side of the work. So this next row is slightly more complicated. Remember, we're still working into that back bar but we now have the right side of the work facing us so our back bar is actually here so if I just turn it upside down we see this back bar just there now it might actually be worth um, playing around with how you want to do this because depending on how you hold your hook and your yarn you might want to adjust this style to suit you but I'm just going to yarn over and just turn my work on to the side like this. So it's actually uh, going from top to bottom. Then I'm going to go under that back bar and then yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through all three. And just by holding my work like this, it makes it much easier for me to work into that back bar and it has the same effect. So I'm going to yarn over, work under that diagonal back bar, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Again, yarn over under that back bar, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through all three. So if I just hold this up, you can see that it's pushing those stitches in the way that it should be, um, be coming forward. So I'm just going to work my way all the way along this second row. So go ahead, pause the video, work those stitches, and I'll meet you back in just a moment. Okay, so I've just worked my way all the way along that row. I actually have one more stitch remaining. Now you have two options here. You could go ahead and do your last stitch into that back bar if you wanted to. However, I find just to make the edges a little bit more stable, you can go ahead and just go into the back loop of those top stitches. So if we look at that V, we're just going to go into the back loop of that stitch and it just makes that very last stitch a little bit more um, stable without ruining the effect of the, of the stitch itself. So that is the camel stitch. So you're going to repeat row two and row three. So what you would do is just uh, chain two, turn the work. Now you have the uh, wrong side facing you. So you have that uh, back bar facing you. You would just go ahead and do your first stitch in there. So I'm going to go ahead and build a few more rows just so that you can start to see what it looks like. 
Okay, so I have now built a few more rows of this and you can see how beautiful it's turning out. It just creates this lovely braided effect to your work or ridged braided effect. I really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. As mentioned, you will find the written pattern, the free written pattern at www.bellacococrochet.com. So go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye!